Mr. Paul, welcome. Thank you, thank you. The part of your reputation that I'm personally and professionally most drawn to has to do with your role in the NBA movement that's called player empowerment. So I think broadly speaking, it's a, it's a shift in influence away from owners who are mostly white, I think by, by far, to players, stars who are mostly black. At this moment, what don't fans understand about who wields the power in, in the business of basketball? When you talk about player empowerment, I like to use a different E word. Because sometimes when you say empower, it gives off this perception that the players can do whatever they want. And that's not true, it's still a business. And I like to talk about the education of it because I think players being educated allows them to understand that they have options. What those options are, well, that's to be negotiated. But also, it's to be understood. And a lot of guys don't really have a perspective of the business. It's been something they've been doing all their life. and you can be taken advantage of just playing the game. I want to ask you about LeBron because sure. he's performed at such a legendary level for so long yeah. under such close examination. He's a GOAT. What have, you, like, what have you learned from him about how to be? As he became more and more successful, the person in him became better. But also, just like everything I've done has been earned. Nobody gave me anything per se. I sacrificed to put myself in a better position because I didn't want to be dependent of LeBron. And so when I see people say, oh, yeah, lucky you, you met somebody in the airport and happy LeBron, and if it wasn't for LeBron, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't do this or that. I, I would have been successful at anything. What, what would you want to be? The commissioner of the NBA. I believe it. I'm going to manifest you, that. Yeah. You could be. Yeah. Your, your ecosystem, it's much bigger than LeBron. I mean, you have had re these really, really important clients, but it's hard not to think about him just because he's starting, I think it's his 21st First season. season. Yes. And like, I think like he's like a sixth person to do that. Yes. It's very, very unusual. So I'm wondering what you, what you want your life in the NBA and also outside the NBA to look like in a, in a post-LeBron post world one day when he's ready. It's going to look the same. That's why I built it. You know, today in meetings, um, you know it's there, but we don't go in pitching LeBron. We go in pitching clutch. You know, and, and here's the thing. People say, oh, well, LeBron gave you an opportunity. Lucky you, you, you did this. But you don't talk about, I think Donald Trump's dad gave him a loan, right? James Dolan's dad gave him a business. Somebody gave Mark Zuckerberg a loan. What's the difference? Yep. Because it wasn't my dad, and you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody has to have an opportunity from somewhere, especially me coming from a place where if you had any entrepreneurial aspirations, who's gonna look at your business? Who's gonna, who's gonna help you do a business plan? Right, here's an equity investment. Right, and then who has the experience and the know-how and the resources and the relationships to help you even navigate to a place to where you're doing it properly. My favorite character in this book is, is your father. He lived with another family, but, yes. he, but he helped raise you. And um, my brother and sister, yeah. You mentioned his business, R&J Confectionery. Yeah. You write, dad was the type of guy that everybody wanted to know, five foot seven inches tall with a six foot five reputation. Yes. He got to work every day, I think 6 a.m. 6 a.m., yeah. What did he teach you about how the business world works? Oh man, I mean, he just taught me the importance of consistency, you know, getting up every day, rain, sleet, hail, snow, hol there was no holidays. I watched how he treated people. I watched how he went about his day. I watched the things, the detail of it. And he can see things in people that they probably couldn't see in themselves and he took the time out to have a conversation with you. I watched how he treated other business owners around him. So I'm learning this business hmm. every day. And so it got to the point to where my dad could just sit in the chair and me, my brother, or my sisters could actually run the store. I, your dad is my favorite character in the book, but I would like to talk for a second about your mom because, mm -hmm. you know, your depiction of your mom in the book is like, it's like it's, it's not cliche though. It's, no. not, it's not corny. You describe your mom as like not a bad person. 
No. Just, just a person who was addicted to drugs at, for, for a long time. Yeah. But then your dad dies. Yeah. And after watching the impact of addiction on your mom, you make a decision whose context is like, you know, people should read the book to understand what's, what's happening in your life at the time. Yeah. But you make a decision to sell. You, you don't do it for that long. It's like, it's like a part of the, it's, yeah. it's a part Put of the book. my toe in the water, yeah. Will you talk about, like, I, I was impressed that, that you spoke about watching addiction and making a choice to deal drugs. Like, I found the honest, I, I found it, like, among other things, just, like, very honest. Were you, yeah. were you worried that it would somehow, like, impact your reputation or? No, I mean, how many people in high positions actually are users? Today, still, right now. You know, and that's not, and that's not a decision out of survival. That's a, that's something that they choose to do every day because they enjoy it. So you can't judge, right? I was a kid trying to survive. And so, um, yeah, my mom was great though. My mom, she, she had a, a, an issue, no different than the, 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 the issues right now with, with fentanyl in our communities. But I, I can honestly say, going through those things, watching my mom, watching other people's moms, watching other people's dad. I was lucky enough to have my dad. And I was also lucky enough for my dad to explain to us at a very young age what was actually happening. And so I never lost the respect for my mom. And my mom had so much respect for us that today I understand why she was absent because she never wanted us to have a visual of that. And so, the book, it was important for it to be real. Like I can't, I don't fake anything. There's no gray, there's black and there's white. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be in the position I am today, but I'm also thankful for what I went through um, as, as a kid because it, it's, it's really, it was my assembly line. It really was, and it, 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 it molded me. It makes me think before we end that reputation, like if it lives long enough, yeah, changes. It, it turns into something else. Yes, and then yeah. it becomes like um, like your legacy. Comes legacy. Reputation. Reputation becomes legacy. What do you want yours to be? Oh, uh, you know, I think I think my reputation is pretty solid across America. You know, when I walk around in any neighborhood, people know, you know, that that guy right. It's a stand up guy. My dad, my dad wouldn't want it no other way. But the difference is today. You know, I, w I just want to be a great example. I want to continue being a great example and not just making it about me, not just look what I did type of thing, but I want to build things, continue to be a builder. Today when I go to work, I have 80 employees, 75 employees, right? And they're young between the ages of 21 and 55 probably. Um, but continue that, you know, that dip opening different verticals, um, of the ecosystem of sport and building things to where I can provide opportunity, if that makes sense. You, you know what comes into my head is my final question when you talk about that? Building something, ownership, Yeah. may I ask? Do you, I have you no interest in owning the team. I don't. I know, you know my competitors are trying to push that narrative out there. Uh, oh, because, is that right? Yeah. Th they're trying to, they're yeah, trying they to save the- they tell families that all the time. Oh, don't go with him, he's going to, when LeBron retires he's going to go and and own a team mm -hmm. like but first i don't have enough money to own a team first of all so let's just get that out the way and then secondly i think owning a team would hinder me i'm a creative at heart so i have to have a lot of different irons in the fire because one one thing people don't realize those owners they built something so they don't own a team all day every day they go to work they run aries they run you know, Blackstone, they run, you know, so many different businesses that they have, you know, Carnival Crew, all these different things that the owners have. They don't just own a team all day. So we think I'm gonna go sit on my couch and own a team? No, I don't wanna do that. I could definitely imagine you like starting a, like you mentioned areas like a, a private equity fund. Would that, would that appeal to you? Yeah, it would, yeah. And I just might. What would you call it? I got the name, but I can't give it to you. All right, we better end there. I'll, I'll give it to you off, off the air. I'll hold you to it. I got it. What a pleasure. What a pleasure to have Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Great, man. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Appreciate very much. you. All yep. right, you take care. Watch The Business Week Show, Thursday nights, 10.30 Eastern on Bloomberg Television or 8.30 on Bloomberg.com or the Bloomberg app on Connected TVs.